Hey folks, Quilly Dean here, and welcome to, I guess, a first early impressions kind of review of Fallout 4, because a lot of people are asking my opinion, plus I'm, I'm tweeting a bunch of things on uh, Twitter, and a lot of them are kind of complaints about the game, but you have to understand, I tend to only complain about games that I like, and the fact of the matter is, Fallout 4 is an exceptionally good game. I mean, if this doesn't come out with, like, a Metacritic rating above 90, I will be shocked. It is a very, 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 very good game. Um, the only concerns about it are, well, two things. One, if it's really good and I'm going to play a lot, then I want to make sure that it's absolutely perfect and there's nothing that annoys me. And two, the question is, does it feel like Fallout? Um... And, and that, that really depends on exactly what kind of experience you're looking for in Fallout. Um... The, the start of the game is one of the greatest sort of introductions uh, to a game in a long time. I just loved, 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 loved the start. Um, so, oh, most of this information is relatively out there. This is very light spoilers for the very basic outline of the game, basically what you're going to see in the first 10 minutes. Um, but, you know, you actually start, as opposed to every other Fallout game, you don't start after the nuclear war and after, you know, people are getting out of their vaults or whatever. You actually start this sort of a prelude from before the big nuclear explosion. And that bit is wonderful. Uh, the world looks great. It looks like everything's made out of Bakelite, which is a wonderful, wonderful visual design. Uh, I thought it looked really, really, really lovely. Um, the This sort of post-apocalyptic view, it does have a little bit of a... Um, I don't know, almost cel-shaded, cartoony sort of stylistic look to it. Um, which isn't bad, and actually in a lot of places it looks really good. Now, of course, these games don't tend to be the most cutting edge of graphics. Uh, as a result, mostly I'd say because of just the massive scale of the game. There's only so much you can sort of push the visuals and the textures without having the game sort of collapse under its own weight, for example. Um, personally, I think it looks quite lovely. Um, really enjoy that uh, very, very much. So, one of my sets of complaints that I did have on Twitter was that there is a sort of a weird pacing right at the start. It starts off so good. The build-up to the, the sort of nuclear war, going to the vault, and then what happens in the vault and leaving the vault is very, very, very interesting. Very well done. Paced out great. The reactions from your character is absolutely fantastic. Here's mine, by the way. Um, oops. Okay. Um, but um, and then... Soon after that, after you've got like, oh, I'm... See, maybe it would be different, but you get to pick from... Well, you've got the male and female characters, and the male is a soldier, is his background, and the female character is a, is a lawyer, is her background. And so it's just perfect, the sort of, like, initial introduction of, like, oh my god, this is all crazy, you see your first rad roach, and you just sort of freak out, like, what the hell's going on, this is so bizarre, it makes no sense, it's great. Um, and then we, we knew some of this stuff from the, the trailer, when you come back to your home and you find... Um, your, your robot companion again, and that sort of just reveal of so many things is fantastically handled. And, and you know, the original, the initial sort of scavenging around your, your old neighborhood. But then, ten minutes later, you're suddenly packing a laser gun, helping to defend and kill people. Uh, you're, you're helping to kill some raiders and defend people, and then all of a sudden you've got power armor, and there's a helicopter, and then, oh, Deathclaw happens, and all these things. It's like, Really? Really? This is the sort of pacing we're going for? It was wonderfully, wonderfully paced up until that point, and then shortly after that, now you're the general of this group, and then uh, ten minutes later, I'd met the, uh, the, the, um, the Brotherhood of Steel already, and ten minutes after that, I was a member of the Brotherhood of Steel. It's like, this... I, I just woke up, like, half an hour ago in the vault. What's going on here? Um, and that was kind of jarring. And another thing um, that is going on here is I don't really have, like, again, I've played eight hours at this point. Um, eight hours the game has been running according to Steam. Uh, mostly it's been it's been relatively active, um, although you know obviously I haven't done that much work around my neighborhood here. But I haven't really picked up the thread on the uh, the main quest yet. Like, the, there's I'm I'm looking for someone, but I don't really have anything sort of leading me there. I'm just sort of doing stuff, busy work, and it seems like a little weird. Like, it's like my character doesn't have a sense of urgency about this quest to, well, to find, to find this certain person that she's looking for. Um, there's like no sense of urgency about it. She's like, what's that? You need me to go and help you build a bunch of villages? Psh, sure, I got nothing better to do. No, you don't. You do have something better to do. You should be going out, um, looking for someone. What's going on here? And that's one of the things that um, in Fallout 3 and Fallout 4, like, these Fallout games do work really good as a sort of sandboxy, do everything, get distracted by side quests kind of games. But Fallout 3 and New Vegas, um, 
made sure that there was a, you know, a strong sort of plot element right from the start that would sort of lead you. These breadcrumbs would be like, lead you to the next town, lead you to the next thing, always sort of pushing this main plot forward. Of course, you know, you'd get distracted. I only just finished the, uh, the New Vegas main plot this week, actually, because I realized I hadn't done it yet before Fallout 4 had coming out. Uh, even though I put in <laughs> you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of hours into New Vegas. I just never bothered finishing the main plot, so I did that. Um, but I think the reason that that's not the case in this game, that you don't have that sort of breadcrumb uh, throwing you forward, is that um, it is because you're building these towns. The the impetus of those that bread trail, those breadcrumbs in Fallout 3 and New Vegas, uh, was to just move you to the next location so you could find more stuff to do. Whereas here, you've got sort of your town that you're building up, right? The the base building game. And so there's no room for that breadcrumb trail thing. And as a result, it, it feels a little weird, the pacing to me. Um, but, you know, that that is that is a bit odd. And also, it feels like the quests are a little bit sort of simpler and less interesting uh, than they have been in the past. In particular, um, in every version of Fallout, from Fallout 1, in fact, even like Wasteland and all that, um, you know, you had a lot of options in how you would deal with certain situations. A lot of opportunity for stealth, for um, pickpocketing a key off someone so you can get into the back room and just finish a job without ever being seen or killing anyone. Um, or, you know, a lot of opportunity to use your speech skill or your barter skill or a science skill or all kinds of different things to bypass stuff. Well, because of two things. One, because um, the skill system doesn't exist anymore in Fallout 4. And two, because of the new conversation system, it feels like a lot of that has kind of been stripped away. I feel like everything that's come up so far has just been like, well, I guess I'm going to run in there and shoot everyone with guns. And it feels more... I'm actually getting a little bit more of like a serious Borderlands I'm busy. vibe than a Fallout one. And don't be me wrong, I loved Borderlands. Borderlands is a fantastic game, sort of RPG, FPS, um, uh, and certainly more lightweight and definitely big on the funny. And that's the vibe that I'm getting a little bit in Fallout 4, except, you know, sort of without the funny, right? It's a serious situation. Uh, but a lot of the sort of gameplay aspects and the structure of the, the quests so far I'm feeling is a little bit more like that and a little bit more limiting. Um, and I think, so again, I think it ties back to the decision to change the skill system, but also the conversation system. Now, I think one of the reasons the conversation system got changed is the decision to have fully voiced main characters. Um, and that's the same thing we've seen in, say, Mass Effect, for example, right? When you have a fully voiced main character, you sort of don't want to have conversations where you read the full text of what you're going to say, like, you, you know, you see all the options, and each one of them is the full sentences of what you might say, and then you click on the thing, and then you hear your character say it again, right? That's, that's sort of silly and redundant. So instead, what they have is sort of these one-word um, possible choices that give you a tone of what you're about to say, and you click that, and then it says, you know, something it's in, in that voice-acted style, uh, which might vary a bit for the two main character voice actors. And all the NPCs and all their speeches all fully voice-acted as well. And I think that actually contributes a little bit to one of the other issues. Um, it's something I've often said about uh, Beyond Earth. One of the reasons that Civilization Beyond Earth uh, felt a little problematic in vanilla is because there were only eight faction leaders. As a result, you always saw the same people in every game. But that's because they went through and did a little bit more work on the graphics for the fashion, hey. faction leaders and their multiple variants of them depending on their affinities. Well, as a result of Fallout 4 having you know everything fully voiced, I, I feel it's probably very likely that they have fewer NPCs, fewer people to talk to because of the full voicing uh, requirement. And, in fact, there's less... Yeah, thanks, uh, Sturgis. Um, there's less conversation to be had, right? You don't get the sort of, like, uh, multi-nested dialogue tree where you, like, you, you ask... Uh, about something and then that opens up a few new more questions and you ask about all those things and you go back and you say oh I actually I want to talk to you about something else now every dialogue every conversation I've had with people has been fully linear and in fact if I go and talk to Sturges right now can we trade a few things there's, there's no talk to be had I can't ask him about his life story again I can't you know go back and, and revisit those things um, or have some of those funny interactions all that I can do right now is trade with him um, and I think that's because of that sort of full voice acting or something. Some decision about the, the conversation tree somewhere along the line. And so you lose a little bit of that, um, that more sort of hardcore role-playing sense of, you know, these, you know, the conversation and having to read more text. And, and I'm sorry I'm not wandering any more than this, but I really I don't want to go and spoil anything for people. It's one of the reasons I'm, I'm currently not streaming it or whatever. I just sort of want to enjoy the game on my own. 
Um, and I don't want to make a little video here that might spoil someone else's opportunity to do that if I'm not, you know, just playing along. That being said, there's a lot of really, really good things. One of my favorite things is the new looting interface. The new looting interface is fantastic. Did I ever stuff anything in here? No, let me go ahead and put something in here. Um, here, let's put a blood pack and... I don't know, a carrot in there, right? So normally when you're just going around, you're clearing an area and you're looting, you mouse over and it gives you this great pop-up. You don't have to like hit a key to open things anymore. You see what's in the Foot Locker right away. If I hit E, it'll grab that blood pack. I can use my mouse wheel to select uh, which thing to grab and I can just like mouse over something and go like E, E, there we go, grab everything. Um, I'm using this one this one toolbox here as my, my master storage for like all my stuff, which is kind of funny that, you know, it all fits in there, but um, storage capacity is never something that these games tend to have. Uh, so Skyrim's the same way, right? You can just fill one container with all the things, and it's kind of funny. Um, so I love that. Uh, some of the user interface is still kind of derp. I mean, this this fascination which make with making your Pip Boy be your user interface um, makes it so that it's not necessarily the fastest and easiest thing to navigate around, but it does look very, 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 very cool. Um, there's also like a certain amount of keyboard navigation that you can use here, up and down, or um, isn't, there we go, yeah, there we go. So you can go up and down here for the big categories and left and right for the smaller categories. So there's some ability to do that with the keyboard, which can be very helpful at times. And um, that's pretty good. And obviously that's a bit of a console sort of thing, but it, it works, right? And I think this is just, they really want to have the Pip-Boy be your user interface. So that's the way it is. Um, and that's okay. There uh, there are some, some nice things here. I like it when you uh, go to your workshop here. You can hit the T key to store all the junk. I love the fact that junk is something that is really, really, really desirable in this version of the game. Um, you know, a lot of times in older versions of Fallout, I mean, looting and getting resources was always very, very important, but there was a lot of stuff you just never bothered to pick up. Well, now you kind of want to pick up everything because everything can be broken down and used for material for your crafting. If you pick up tin cans, well, those can give you those can give you metal. They can give you steel that you can use to build other structures um, along with enough junk. Oddly enough, it's almost like the weapons now are a little bit less interesting to pick up because they tend to be very heavy and don't give you that much stuff. Like if I go to my um, my weapons table over here, and let's say I decide, um, let me make sure that I haven't actually, let me just exit out here. It's got to finish the animation. Got to save. Okay don't actually want to break something down, but let's say I go ahead and say I'm going to scrap this pistol over here, right? You can see I get a variety of goods out of here, and I get a decent amount, although some of them, like the pipe ones, don't give you very much, and the question, so you might not actually collect as many low-quality pistols because they don't necessarily give you that much stuff here, and some of them are quite heavy to carry around, whereas in um, Fallout 3 and New Vegas, you would be very happy, generally speaking, to find guns because you were always having to repair and maintain your your weapons there. So um, it's kind of funny, like the sort of inverse of excitement level that I'm having for certain things. But the cooking is fun, the crafting is fun. Obviously, the weapon modding is a big deal here. So let's say we take a look at uh, Quill's laser rifle. Actually, that hasn't really been customized too much. I'm naming them this so that I remember these are the ones I like. Uh, but like the uh, the assault rifle over here. Um, yeah, I haven't unlocked that many things, but like it's got all these different slots for improvement. And actually, when I found this one, it actually had a large bayonet. But I'm not really using that melee stuff quite so much, so I took the bayonet off to lower the rate of the weapon. Um, so it was a 6.5 to a 6. And the reason, and actually, I think, because I'd accidentally backed up a, a, to a previous um, quick save here by misclick. When I started recording this episode, uh, the hotkey that I used to use to record videos is F9. Well, that's quick load on this, so I actually backed up a few minutes. But if I go, and that's not that weapon. I want to use um, weapons. So let's say I use this assault rifle with its weight of six. And I force target this thing. And I queue up some things in vats. So I only get two attacks that it can queue right now. So you can see here how much AP each one of these attacks is using. Um, so it would use each one of these little red bars is how much is used for one of these actions, and there's a little bit left over. Um, I'm kind of impartial as to whether that should pause or not. I think it's sort of six of one, half dozen the other. I wish the chat, like talking with people, would once again be a um, an instant 
pause as opposed to this sort of you click and they don't necessarily respond right away because they got to finish their animation and it's all done in real time it's a little bit weird um, anyway let's go back to my assault rifle over here and modify it I'm gonna change the um, I'm going to change the long barrel to a short light barrel. So I'm going to lose a bit of range and a tiny bit of accuracy, but my weight's going to improve. There's a plus next to the weight because it's improving by going down. It's going down from a 6 to a 5. So it's going to be 1 pound or 1 kilo lower, or whatever the units of measurements are in this game. So I'm going to do that. Okay, and I'll make that. So now it's got a short barrel on there. So now it's got a weight of 5, which A, is less heavy in my inventory, which is very nice. But B, if I target this guy here, you can see I've actually got, now I can queue up three attacks in a row uh, in my, um, in, in VATS. It will use up all my ability points, um, or uh, action points, but um, by doing this, then I will get, you know, three attacks in the slow motion mode. Now, you don't necessarily need to min-max things so that you, you perfectly... Um, line up your AP like this, right? You don't necessarily need to do that because obviously your AP is going to recharge. In the last example, I would have been able to fire twice, take a beat, and then fire a third time, and it generally would have been fine. So, like, if the weapon is legitimately better, even by being heavier, it's not necessarily in the world. But um, it's nice to be able to work on that. So you're working on the you're working on the accuracy, the damage, the the weapon capacity. Um, and all those things, but also the weight, both for carrying capacity and the AP. And every weapon type clearly has a, a base um, AP number, and I, I'm suspecting it gets multiplied by the weight, although I'm not actually sure. I have, for reference, 132 action points. So with a weight of 5, um, with a weight of 5 on this weapon, for it to come out to be, you know, around 132-ish, plus and minus, you know, there's potentially a multiplier there, right? You can divide one by the other. Now, I don't know if that's the case. Maybe the weight just adds to say, some base value on the uh, on the guns. We don't know that math yet, and the wikis don't have all the information, uh, but I would like to use that to, to optimize things. You can also tune your armor. Um, there's not quite as much um, customization. Just uh, this slot here, and then this miscellaneous here. So look at that. I could actually make this a little bit lighter if I wanted to. It would. It would cost me nothing. Actually, that's interesting. Lighter build would actually give me two extra ability points or uh, action points, and cut its weight down by half without losing any of its defense. Just use up some material. Or I could say pocketed, which would actually increase the weight ever so slightly, and would do what? Improves carrying capacity. Interesting. Doesn't actually tell me how much it's affecting carrying capacity. Why not? It doesn't give me any indication as to how much carrying capacity would be modified. But yeah, so despite this being slightly heavier, presumably it would um, give me a net increase in carrying capacity. But I, for me, I would probably end up taking lighter build. In fact, let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and make that because why not? It sounds like a win-win. Um, and actually, I could go and reinforce it. This would make it slightly heavier, right, from 4.8 to 5.5, but would give me an extra two points of physical and energy resistance. So laser beams, that's that lightning bolt over there. Uh, that sounds like a good idea there, too. And again, you know, so I've got all these materials that I'm collecting from different goods. It'll tell me what it's using. Um, in this case, I think it's using the raw goods that I've, I've torn apart from, um, from dismantling some buildings, but sometimes it'll tell you I wonder if we can end up seeing one of those. Sometimes it'll tell me that it's using an actual um, an actual object. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there we go. See, the I've got a pack of duct tape, which is going to be used to satisfy the requirement of three units of adhesive. So it tells me specifically what it's using to do that. Uh, you can pre-break down a lot of these things, like the guns, but a lot of times uh, it'll just use the materials directly, which is cool. Um, Something else that's cool, of course, is the power armor. I was very concerned when you get this very, 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 very early on in um, in your adventure, assuming that you sort of follow the, you know, the only quest that you sort of have at that time, as opposed to just wandering randomly into the wilderness, you do get a suit of power armor. But that's a lot less worrisome than I, I thought, because, of course, in, classically in Fallout, power armor is like the end game armor. It is the best, heaviest, most powerful armor in the game. Well, in this, the way that they're working it with the... Um, the power supplies, it's kind of interesting because they're very short-term use suits. Um, maybe later on it'll change with different power supplies or some different ability to recharge it or you can keep multiple batteries on you or something. I haven't discovered that yet. 
But for now, I don't want to do, I don't want to wear this for my casual exploring. If I know for sure I'm going to go ahead and have to clear out a very difficult area, for example, um, then that'd be an excellent time for me to use my suit and to drain one of my fission batteries. Um, or maybe if this base here were being attacked, then I wouldn't have to worry about traveling around, for example. Speaking of base, obviously that's a whole big component of the game. I don't know exactly what the advantage of having a bigger base is yet at this point, or making your people happy. For example, here my people's happiness is increasing over time because they they have plenty of food, water, power, and defense, and a sufficient number of beds. Um, I still only have the original five people over here, although I think I'm going to be able to start attracting some more people relatively soon because of some things that I have done. Um, and then I'm quite curious to see what the advantage of having a bigger compound is. Uh, in particular, I think most likely, from the sound of some of the loading screen tips that I see, we'll be able to attract some people with various specializations, like uh, a doctor, for example. And that would be very handy to have around. So I guess that's the thing. You're just sort of building up... Because um, right now, unlike classic other versions of Fallout that you've played, there aren't really established towns. Which is ironic, because this is the first version of Fallout that is much more urban as opposed to rural. You're not going through the wilderness here. In fact, and, and that's one of the, the appeals of Fallout that is missing in this game. You don't have that sense of, like, hiking through miles and miles and miles and miles of radiated desert to get to some other small settlement. Everything feels a lot closer and a lot more compact because you're basically, you know, just on the outskirts of, of Boston, I guess. Um, and things aren't that far apart, and, and they're very developed. You tend to be walking around in the ruins of the city. But ironically, yeah, there aren't anything in the way of shops. The, the city itself is is the, the, the true wasteland, in that it's full of gangs and, and um, ghouls and super mutants and all those sorts of things. It is not a safe place to be, and I haven't found a single merchant there. Um, in fact, now that I think about it, I've only found maybe two merchants in this entire game so far. So I guess that's the thing. You build up these towns, and then you start to have merchants to trade and deal with. Right now, I'm not saving my um, things I find. I, I'm not really saving them to sell for caps, which is very different from most fallouts. Instead, I'm converting them into resources to sort of build up my town a wee bit. So, um, so as I said... I do find this game to be exceptionally, exceptionally good. It is a very, very, very good game. Um, a couple of things annoyed me, especially early on with the pacing. It just felt, like, very unreasonable to go from, um, oh, I just woke up, my, and what's going on with the world, I don't understand anything, to now I'm the general of the Minutemen, and I have power armor, and I am routinely taking on dozens dun of people simultaneously, and I just seem to have accepted that, and you know what, I don't really have to go looking for my uh, my child that badly, apparently. It's really not a high priority. It's like, well, what's up with that? Let's scrap these tires. I've got to clean up more of the mess around here. That's one of the things you can do in town. By the way, some people don't know that. They, like, spend all this time doing other stuff. You should probably go, if you want some materials, just go and, like, clean up all these broken houses. You'll get lots of materials, and then you get a nice bit of space to work with. Um... Scrap that. You can keep it. A component, instead of scrapping it, well, this you have to scrap. You don't have a choice. Um, but some bits, like let's say I want to get rid of this lamppost over here, right? Because it's in the way. No, that one's I've got to scrap. Um, or here. So I could scrap this gun, or I could store it, right? Some things can be stored instead of scrap. And then when you build the next one, it doesn't take any materials. Because scrapping it, you don't get everything back, for example. But now we've got that. So I've actually gone ahead and built, um, where is it? Down here cleared one of these houses and and built up a, a basic structure. There we go, right down here. I haven't filled it with anything yet. Do, do, do. Oh, wait, that was the other thing that annoyed me. The psychic lady that you just sort of accept right from the start. There's no, like, it feels like it's sort of thing you should almost sort of hear about and have to, like, hunt down. There's, like, this lady who has visions. Maybe she can give you some information, and you hunt her down. But no, you, like, get introduced to her right away, and she's this quirky old lady with visions and things like that. She was feeling very Jar Jar to me right at the start. You're just forced to accept this this quirky character um, that's going to have great influence over your story. And it's like, don't push this on me, you know? You, you maybe build it up. Like, give me time for my character to accept the fact that, okay, there's a psychic lady with some information, for example. I don't know. Anyway, here's uh, one of the structures that I put together over here. Uh, oh, yeah, and I did put in a few extra beds just to get started. I didn't know if it was, like, going to pull in people automatically or what, so I just got that going. Plus, it was a test of, like, putting down these structures, which is quite neat. Um, things snap together relatively well, actually. I mean, you can build a sort of raw walls, um, but there's sort of these prefab components that fit together like Lego um, in a way that it's pretty handy, actually. Let's get rid of this junked-up building over here. Um, that door we also can't keep. 
and there we go. So we can store this doormat. So I'm going to do that. Boop. So we'll just keep that doormat for later as opposed to smashing it because uh, maybe we can do something with it. Get some more wood and just start cleaning up the town. Actually, I don't want to clean it all up because A, I don't necessarily need that many materials right now. Um, and B, I actually sort of want to keep a certain amount of like walls and stuff around to use as uh, defensive measures and cover in case I get attacked. Hasn't happened yet, but I know it's something that, that can happen. So I'm curious to see how it goes. Um, in case you guys haven't seen it, I'm going to end this by taking a little tour in my power armor. So I'm going to go and slap in a, uh, a fission battery in there. There we go. A fusion core, rather. My bad. And put that in. So you find these things scattered uh, throughout the wasteland. And I don't know... I presumably will be able to build a structure later on. <laughs> um, presumably you'll find some way to just recharge them later on. But you can see at the bottom right corner, not, not the AP meter, but right next to that, the core meter. Uh, in fact, it's got six... Uh, I think I've got six cores on me. Um, as you move around, the, the core will drop, and eventually it will run out of juice, and you'll move very, 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 very slowly. Uh, repairing these is a lot of fun, and you get different bits, and apparently you can unlock cut, uh, different paint jobs. I've unlocked this uh, flame one very, very early on, um, which was cool, and then there's another one. Yeah. I this is not particularly spoilery. Do -do -do. Pop out of there. Um, let's see, how do I do it? Oh, right, I've got to say, let's grab these bits off of there. Tab out of here. So now it's just like the power armor frame with no actual armor. I could still get into this, just wouldn't give me very much purpose. And then slowly walk over to the uh, power armor station. Tell it to craft. So here, um, that's when you'd mouse over this and you could repair, right? Down here, repair. But you can also modify these bits. Um, right now, I have no alternate models and no alternate uh, mods available, um, but I do have uh, materials that I can click here. So this is the um, the no material mod, which looks like rusty and terrible. Um, that you get the um, and there's those modifiers too. If you have everything painted in the Minuteman paint, then you get bonus charisma with everything there. I like the hot rod flames paint. You get increased agility with all uh, pieces painted that way because you know the red ones go faster. Um, and then, uh, oh, the vault tech paint as well. I hadn't realized I had one of those, actually. Which apparently will also give us more charisma if everything is presumably all painted the same color. I'm assuming it gives you plus one charisma or something like that if they're all painted. I haven't checked the stats. I guess what I can do is I can tab out, tab out, tab out. Yes, exit the station. Did I actually move the suit? How did it pick which suit to move there? To, to try out? Actually, don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, and I do have six power core, fusion cores in my bank here. Um, so I can run my suit for quite a long time at this point, actually. But I'm going to try to save these. I'm not going to take my suit out willy-nilly. Uh, what was I going to do? Oh, yes, I was going to... We're just going to close out doing this. Um, so right now, my agility is seven. And I've got a plus to it because... I am wearing, underneath my armor, I'm wearing military fatigues, which give me an agility bonus of two. Let's take that off. Yeah, agility is five. So seven with the military fatigues, and then, right, I successfully put that back on. Yep, yeah, seven. And then if I do pop into here, I love the animation of the slapping in the fusion core, too, if there's not one in there to activate things. Might make sense if I took my hat off, but you know. Oh, it actually clipped through there for a second. Um, and now we check here. No! My agility is down to six. So presumably... Uh, where do you see all the effects? There's a place you can go for it. Those are my stats. Ran away with her chat. Isn't there somewhere I can find out all the stuff that's affecting my character? I was sure there was. Hang on. Let's um let's eat something that gives me some sort of modifier here. Let's eat a jet. And go back to stats. Oh, show effects. Did I miss that last time? No, oh, maybe it wasn't there. Now there is. I'm not sure. Um, so I'm assuming 
that wearing the giant suit gives you a penalty to agility. Um, but then maybe I get plus one from the paint job. So maybe you get like minus three from wearing the suit, uh, which would go from seven down to... Oh! Unless it's using the suit stats instead of my apparel. I bet you I don't have the plus two bonus from military fatigues right now. So it set my agility back down to five, and then I get the plus one because of the paint job. I bet you that's what's going on, which makes sense. Be nice to get more of this information. Again, once all the, the wikis and everything have been updated, I'm sure we'll get a lot more information about that sort of stuff. But yeah, you can see that the um, this is taking effect. And I like the fact you can wear, you can find suits of armor that are like full body. Um, some probably even your head, for example. Um, like, I don't have a good example. Actually, no, the uh, silver shroud costume over here. Let me go ahead and pop out. Is that me, apparently? Yes, I'm, I'm Quillette. Um... Oh, it's because of the uh, the jet. There we go. That's worn off. All right. Um, <laughs> um, right, what was I going to say? Right, if I put on the Silver Shroud costume, that is my full, my full body. So I can replace that, and all I'm wearing is this. So it took off everything else. So some things are full sets of armor. I got the sweet hat too, right? Boom. Look at that. I look awesome. Um... And then some things come in bits and pieces like this. So you put on individual items, which I like because then there's, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. For some reason, I like the uh, the individual bits and pieces. And you can mouse over things. You can see uh, on the little tool tip if it's a big improvement or not. There we go. That one is. That's the one we just reinforced, actually. So what I should do is I should um, tear down, break down this metal chest piece so I don't put it on uh, for any reason. I should store this extra dress and do that sort of thing. And, um, yeah. So I do like the game a lot. So don't be confused by my Twitter things. I did find that the pacing early on was kind of wonky. Um, also, I feel like while they have, they've definitely improved the um, the gun combat from previous versions of Fallout. I feel like they've actually taken that as a hint that they should make their game maybe a little bit more FPSy. And. Um, I feel like the shooting is a little bit more prevalent and a little bit more action-y, and so I'm having to play it a little bit more like an actual conventional shooter as I'm going around. Uh, I mean, that still helps, obviously, but I'm definitely getting more of a... We've emphasized the shooter part of the game, and we've lost a little bit of the RPG and uh, alternative way of dealing with problems way. So, whereas it was very feasible in previous versions of Fallout to be a relatively speech-centric, science-centric... Um, Sneak-centric, pacifist, slash, thief, slash, maybe assassin, so you didn't actually fight. Maybe you still killed people from time to time. Um, here it feels like you are going to be playing as a soldier, one way or another. Um, and that might change later on, and at the same time, maybe I'm just, you know, not playing it. Maybe I'm not noticing that I could have done things in a different way, but so far it definitely doesn't feel that way. And I think that is really emphasized by the legendary and sort of epic bosses that you will run into. Um, just wandering randomly through the uh, through the city, I I found like a few legendary guys to kill, and they were pretty epic fights. You know, they were exciting, they were interesting that way, but um, um, you know, they felt like yeah, this is a boss fight that I had to do, and in fact, some of the plot ones that I did, uh, specifically with Brotherhood of Steel, led to a massive, big, epic fight against a very scary boss-type creature, and um, you know, it was like, hey, great, and everything, but again, am I playing like Borderlands or or, or something else? This is not what I'm used to thinking of when I'm thinking of Fallout at all. Yeah, there's a few epic fights here and there, but they tend to be rare in Fallout. And again, the ability to bypass fights through conversation or stealth is one of the hallmarks of the Fallout um, franchise, and I'm not really feeling it here. So, it, it I feel like it lost a little bit of its Falloutness, but it is an exceptionally good game. Don't get me wrong; it's very good. Um, but yeah, lost a little bit of its Falloutness. Anyway, that's it. Um, again, just sort of an early review. Is the game good? Is it worth buying? Yeah, probably. I mean, again, it depends. It is, you know, kind of pricey. It is a full AAA title. Heck, in Canada here, it's $80 Canadian, which certainly hurt a lot to pick up. Um, but I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun and, and all that. But um, having just, just, just replayed New Vegas, I'm, I'm feeling like there's a little bit of things missing here and there. On the other hand, you do gain a lot more, like the excellent crafting system. And... I was very, when I when I found the power armor right at the beginning of the game, I was very like, really game? Really? 
But now I'm totally cool with it. I love the idea of this thing that you're sort of like building up as a backup. You know, that's just in case. That's your reserve in case something goes bad. In fact, um, it would have been really helpful if I realized there was a big giant boss fight coming up uh, that I just did recently because I would have picked up my suit. I did it without my suit, which was pretty rough. Um, also, I think there's missing a hardcore mode, isn't there? I don't remember getting a pop-up about it. And in gameplay, I'm just playing a normal difficulty. But there's not like a mode where you have to sleep and eat and drink. And um, so that's too bad. And you know what? Most of the time that wasn't really a thing in Fallout either. But it was built into, at the very least, New Vegas. And I thought that was a big improvement. In fact, didn't Fallout 3 also have it built in? I don't remember. It's been too long since I've actually played Fallout 3. I should play Fallout 3 again. All right, we're going to wrap this up. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time. Bye-bye.